News 18, India. Political questions. I am aware of the time. Thank you for answering all our business and economic questions uh, at great length. Uh, we are seeing a different side of Nirmala Sitaraman. You know, in the last few weeks, uh, you you've also been seen as an aggressive politician. Uh, you know, you have turned the heat of ri heat on your rivals in Tamil Nadu. Uh, you said that Stalin's DMK is an anti-Hindu party, and that they were forbidding the live telecast of the Ram Mandir Pran Pratishthan ceremony. Uh, what do you have to say to that? 100%. I, I have not said a loose word. I did mean what I say and I do truly believe that repeatedly the attack on Hindus in Tamil Nadu uh, in layers which are seen and in layers which are not seen have been felt for a long time. I speak very many times about Tamil Nadu with lived experience yes. and therefore I don't talk too soon nor do I speak too uh, indiscreetly. So when I say something I mean it because I feel it also. I do corroborate with data with actual ground activities and then only comment. Unfortunately if that is the politics of a state party, uh, which has had a lot of uh, uh, ideological support extended to separatist politicians of years gone by, yes. whether they support it even today, I do not know, but there are periodic voices which come out, which are very separatist in tone and tenor. My grief is a national party like the Congress party has been decimated in Tamil Nadu and today, till today, they are not a position to win an election, even a couple of seats on their own without being in alliance with one of these parties. BJP is of course a beginner there. It's been there since the uh, Jansang days and it's gaining strength. We'll continue to work with the people. But the grief that I want to express is a national party like Congress party also joins that anti-Hindu voice, does not condemn the anti-Hindu voice of the party DMK and even worse goes in support of such voices which come from DMK and today not just in Tamil Nadu. A Congress party member in the Lok Sabha today, meaning he is a sitting Lok Sabha member and a brother of a chief a deputy chief minister in Karnataka also speaks in separatist voice. So anti-Hindu is one and to Hindu activity is another which also is happening in Karnataka incidentally. Congress party in Tamil Nadu supports these kind of anti-Hindu or anti-separatist voices and today that is a spirit with which Congress also is aligning which is what I find utterly shocking. Is there an attempt to paint the Bharti Janta Party as a North Indian party and you know this uh, North, North South divide encouraging that is that is that is that what you say? They've always called Bharti Janta Party two things. It is a Brahmin Baniya party. Yes. It's a Hindi party. Today, the kind of support BJP receives in South India disproves all this. And in, I don't want to name individuals and say, oh, he or she belongs to this caste. We promoted this caste and therefore, more than BJP, I can challenge today is there any one party in India which has worked for the betterment of tribals in India, which has worked for the betterment of the Dalit scheduled castes in India, which has recalled some of the best iconic leaders coming from those communities but attaining national stature, whether it is Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, whether it is uh, Guruji and considered like God himself, Birsa Munda, whether it is the uh, sons of the Shabzadeh, Sikh gurus, who gave their lives in their teenage for the sake of our country. 
So in any one of these, I want to ask, is there any one party in this country which has not, which has as much served as the BJP? So what is Hindi party? When, when Prime Minister of India is talking about all languages, he quotes Thiruvalluvar. Yes. He talk, uh, quotes from Purana Nuru. Every given opportunity, he takes the languages even to the UN. So, Tamil Nadu's politics, speaking of these kind of things, has happily kept the Hindi speaking parts of the country, even if they are in alliance with them, away from the separatist rhetoric. So you think, oh, we are in alliance with that party, they cannot do any wrong. Yes. But they have been speaking all these separatists earlier. They are speaking anti-Hindu earlier, only because of the language gap. Just as they didn't want to learn Hindi, many of the North Indians didn't want to learn Tamil. Yes. So there has never been an understanding, a comprehensive, complete understanding of what's developed in Tamil Nadu. So are you hopeful that the BJP will do better this time in South India? I mean, uh, how many seats do you see them getting out of 131 seats? It's difficult to talk about number of seats, but I'm sure but the Adipur, efforts which are being made by Tamil Nadu BJP unit. So you're likely to open your account in these states like Tamil Nadu, Andhra we'll Pradesh? We certainly work for the people uh, and hope to have their Kerala. blessings. Of Tamil Nadu, you have a... You have no, a, whether it's Kerala, whether it's Tamil Nadu, lots of work is happening and people are responding as well. Are you likely to contest the elections? I don't think. No. It's my party's decision. Okay. Uh, one last question on 2024. Uh, you know, what is your assessment? How many seats are, do you think that the BJP is likely? I'm not sure I'll again yeah. uh, speculate on the number of seats. Better than last time? Much better than last I time? I think people will see the truth and commitment and dedication with which the Honorable Prime Minister has been working. They are blessing him. They are seeing his earnestness. They are seeing how non-stop he puts the people of India and the nation first among everything else. So I am confident. The opposition has constantly been crying themselves hoarse about the use of intelligence agencies. You know, so whether it is Kejriwal or Mamta Banerjee's leaders uh, in West Bengal or Hemant Soren uh, more recently, uh, you know, they complain that there is harassment by central investigative agencies. Uh, and if, uh, you know, the leaders jump onto the other side and join the BJP, then they are let go scot-free. Uh, what do you have to say? My last question. No, first of all, many of the cases in which the CBI or the Enforcement Directorate or the Income Tax pursue cases cannot come to the level of asking for custodial or asking for interrogation or arrest can happen overnight. You will be surprised in many of these cases. The cases were originally filed during UPA times. Many of these cases belong to that era. You know the Indian system. The level and the time consumed for each stage to mature and to reach a stage where summons are being served. It consumes a lot of time. Many of these are from that era case. So it's not as if we've done it. One, second, a survey or a search happens. Tell me if they've come empty-handed. Roomfuls of cash. Equally, when we are talking about common man adopting to technology, doing digital payment, you have people sitting with tons of currency notes in their homes. Nowadays, everything is videographed. I can't sit here and say, I found so much cash in your house without a proof. The video shows in the bathroom, in the bedroom, in lockers, tons of cash being kept. What explains that? So, it's very well to use that as a whip to hit at the ruling party to say, you're using the Enforcement Directorate or CBI. These are professional agencies. They take huge time to make their cases compact and ready because everything is now monitored by the court once the charge sheet is filed. Yes. And you have to submit the documents to the court. You can't just go there and say, I found this, I found that. Records prove it. 
So, era is changing. People don't like to have corrupt leaders. So, when the enforcement directorate go and knock at the doors and come out with such pictures, common people are seeing it. You may cry hoarse, as you said, saying it is being politically used. I'm sorry. It is something which was case from your era. You filed a case against your own ally. There are partners in crime. And then there are partners and enemies also. Yes. Nilwaji, thank you so much for answering all our questions. Okay. You, are, you, you answer economic questions and political questions with equal felicity and passion. It's always such a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Rahul.